Okay, now, forward. Hope you've had a good week. Welcome back to the Cyber Drop. We are getting really close to some exciting tests. Just fitting up the last pieces of insulation for the roof. Not long now. The final welds here are for the roof vent supports in the middle of the roof. And then I'll put down my torch. I don't know how many hundreds of welds I've done on this thing now, but it's a good way to learn how to weld. Time to put the 3M tape on and prepare to fasten the front section of the roof. This time it's gonna be a little tricky because I won't be able to clamp it around the edges. And I'm not attaching the corner molding until I do some tests. Now after routering that second top groove to allow the panel to fold, I found that it didn't sit just perfectly at the very top. It was out by a, maybe a sixteenth of an inch. So I took it back down and I just ran the router along the same groove, just widened it a little bit. And that did the trick. Now that I've got these V grooves cut into the panel, I just need to be careful that those flaps don't bend the opposite way. It would weaken it. So just gotta be a little careful. And here I am taking this piece of 10 mil Coroplast and I think I'm gonna use this as my front ballast slash electronics enclosure. I'm gonna keep it real simple using the trim router again to put in a groove here. And I'm gonna fold this right into the front and at the bottom you'll see later it is being held in by the um, stabilizer leg receiving tubes. And sitting there, I found it was much stronger than I anticipated. And I figured, you know what? That's gonna be good enough. Problem solved, let's move on. So I'm just taking off the 3M tape at the front of the panel to get this thing started. Okay, I put on all the last 3M tape and I'm gonna start the roof now. Very exciting. No rush here, just taking, taking my time, steady as she goes few inches of tape pulled back at a time and good hard squint here trying to use some pliers to pull the tape out from that that corner there. All in all it went down pretty nicely and once I put on the corner molding all around that'll really secure it. So this is the back panel and I'm just getting my depth on the rudder again here making sure I get it just right before putting in the cut. And having it fastened that on, now I get to do my favorite thing, that flush cut router. Oh, so satisfying. Here we go again. And there at last is the shape. Okay, just do a quick walk around here with the roof on. Just use some acetone to clean it up. So here's the seam, and I did it there so that I could have a nice smooth fold here. So that's gonna be waterproof. Don't have to worry about trimming that. And that flat seam, I'm just gonna put on some tape. I've got that 3M tape on a 3 quarter inch cross member here. 3 eighths of each side, splitting the difference. And that 3M tape is completely waterproof, so even if some water gets underneath my tape that I'm gonna put over this, it shouldn't be able to get in there. That's gonna be the front bulkhead for the electronics. I'm actually gonna just tape the inverter onto the inside of this Coroplast 10 mil wall. It's very strong, actually. I can lean up against there, very strong. No supporting framing. It's just bent right there at the top and wedged underneath that insulation. Just worked out well. Just one of those gifts. The stabilizer legs, I think I'm gonna think about some way to cover them. Obviously there will be condensation if I just leave them like that. If I do some winter camping, I'll address that after I put the whole liner fabric on the side walls. Oh yeah, I've got to pop in a couple pieces of insulation that came out while I was putting the roof on. And there's the cutout for the roof vent. Before I do that, I am going to wire in a reverse switch so that I can use it as a ceiling fan as well as an exhaust fan. 
So I'm ready to put the wheels on. I figure I'll just leave the side sticker on as long as possible until it's completely ready to go. Just to provide a little protection while I continue working on the electrical and then I will peel it off. It will be an amazing moment. At last, after many months, I guess about six months now, it's time to test this thing. Of course, everything took much longer than I thought it would. That's how these things go. Now, this is no time to cut corners. I'm gonna clean these hubs inside and out and the spindle, put the wheels on. My dad's helping me get the bucket. The back end's propped up on out of the way. And when that back end is on the wheels, the front end comes up quite easily. And a big part of this for me is, can I manage this thing out in the wild? Can I lift it? Can I move it around? And so that was encouraging to find that, yeah, I could lift it pretty easily as my dad gives me a hand here and getting that front fork on. Cleaning off the headset, re-greasing the cups, getting the steering linkage in place and a final cleanup. Pretty exciting. Time to open up that garage door and take this thing for a rip. Here we are at last. Never give up on your dream. Never give up. Of course, there will be hurdles ahead, but this is a big moment. I'm gonna send it over to my dad for the cameraman and some dad commentary. Classic. He's not used to backing trailers up, that's for sure. It looks pretty good. You're clear. There we go. So we're gonna now bring it down onto the, the road. <laughs> Back and forth. Okay, now, forward. And he's pedaling away on his maiden voyage. How's it working? Good. <laughs> well, there he goes. See if he can turn it around on a dime there. Some neighbors commenting. And here we go. Trying to figure out the turning radius. Just enough to turn in the road. People wondering what on earth he's doing. Okay. What's your advice, Mr. Engineer? <laughs> exactly what he was planning to do, which was to put a few lights, uh, at least reflectors on it for safety purposes. Oh, yeah. I think it's fabulous for the world. You're going to do it on a yacht, Bruce, but he's going to do it on a bike. <laughs> I think you've done a fabulous job. That is beautiful. Thanks a lot. That maiden voyage was a success. It rode real smooth, real quiet, real nice. You could feel that suspension it makes all the difference in the back, that torsion axle suspension. The front fork is a stiff fork, so it's meant really just to absorb any big potholes. One little hiccup that I've come across, which kind of annoys me, is that the stabilizer legs, they're not holding with the clamp as I have it. I think I probably sprayed way too much of that WD-40 dry lube on the tube. And so now, this might not be a good example because this one's a bit stuck. Oh yeah, look how dirty that is. And it's all dirty too. Oh, sh I'll have to figure that out. It was good that it was raining and it was wet out there, so. Most of the spray I think is from my bike rear wheel because this spray will come up 
and hit under there. But it does get a little dirty as you can see. So I'll have to put fenders on both bikes. The bullet bike that I'm gonna use already has a fender. All systems go, testing is good, feels good. Feels stable on the road. I do have to figure out these stabilizer legs though, that's pretty essential. So I will be doing that next.